We've got Trump taking the stand in one of his many trials. It's election day. Molly Jong Fast uh, does the podcast Fast Politics. She writes a weekly newsletter for Vanity Fair where she's a special correspondent and she helps us understand complicated things better. Thank you, Molly, for making uh, the time for us. Let me start with what I was talking about uh, before you came on $5. Can you tell us uh, what faith you have in polling, given what the last 10 years of polling have revealed? I think we should look back to the uh, 2022 red wave, which did not materialize. Uh, yeah, I don't have a huge faith in polling. Again, this was a poll, this big poll that got everyone hysterical from the New York Times. 3,600, I think, was the number of people called on cell phones and landlines. I don't know. Do you pick up uh, unknown numbers on your phone? I, I just, I don't give it a lot of, I, uh, let me rephrase that. I think it's good to worry and Democrats love to worry and there's going to be a lot of good worrying going on in the next year. But I'm not I do not think these polls uh, are something you could take to the bank. Can you please help me understand that? Because historically, a lot of people pay a lot of money for this information. And mm -hmm. until recently, this was information that you can trust. I don't know when that fell apart, how that fell apart. Did it fall apart because of the way that people answer their phone differently than they used to or because they always lie when taking polls and they act differently when it comes time to vote? Well, I think it's an, I think you're right, Dan. And I think there are a number I think there are a couple of factors that do add to this polling problem. And some of it is that people don't answer their phones. There aren't home phones. There isn't this culture of poll, you know, the, we used to have Nelson boxes, uh, Nielsen boxes. I mean, we were in a different world where there was a lot of like, you know, you were a consumer, you gave data to companies in a very uh, deliberate way. Now you give data to companies in a very uh, undeliberate way. But um, the thing I would say about these polls is there are trend lines that are important to for the Biden administration and more importantly, the Biden campaign to watch. And those trend lines are young voters, Hispanic voters, young black voters. Those are the voters that Democrats need to make sure that they are serving, that they are reaching out to. And that's stuff like student loan debt and that's stuff like, you know, greater accountability in government. I mean, there, you know, there are things you can do to appeal to those voters. And I think Biden has been trying to, again, you know, it's early days, but the trend lines, I mean, certainly like if you look at those polls, this, the Nevada numbers, Nevada numbers, the Nevada, the Nevada numbers, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Those numbers are, um, those are bad numbers for Biden. So that is certainly shows that he is not doing what he should be doing with younger Hispanic voters. Let me understand though, beyond the polling, okay, how... Yeah. You can have 91 felony charges beyond the polling and have me thinking that I still think America might vote for this person. How is that possible? So, OK, so two things. One, Donald Trump and I actually had John Carl on my podcast. We were just talking about this. Donald Trump has not gotten a lot of media scrutiny over the last year. And he hasn't gotten as much coverage. So we haven't seen, sure, we've seen the court cases and sure, we've seen the situations around Trump get coverage, but we haven't seen so much of the sort of Trump on the stump stuff. And if you listen to that, you're pretty horrified. So I do think some of this is that he just hasn't been in the spotlight. I think when he's more in the spotlight, people will sort of remember a lot of the craziness. One of the things that's really clear, as I have watched a lot of Trump rallies, is that he's really lost a step. You know, even three years ago, he made a lot more sense. And because he speaks so quickly and freely and unscripted, he really does. Uh, you know, you see him not knowing what state he's in, not knowing, you know, where he is. There's a lot of that kind of stuff, which you're, if he's going to go after Biden for being old, that's not going to do well for him. Helping himself or hurting himself on the stand? 
I, that, I mean, again, he helps himself with primary voters because primary voters see the world the way he does. I'm not sure that screaming at a judge is going to help you when the judge is about to decide the penalty in your civil trial. For me, I would not scream at the judge who was deciding my fate, but that's just me. What is the path for him to make any kind of gains when it comes to independence? Like, what is what is the company line there to attract independence? Because it seems by doubling down on the behavior that put that kind of turned him away the last time, that he's not going to make any progress there. Well, that's a big question, right? Does a soccer mom in Arizona? really care about Trump's retribution for his federal charges in a New York state courtroom. I'm not convinced that that's a winning message for swing state voters who are, I mean, look, swing state voters are concerned with the economy, with inflation, with, you know, uh, with, with the sort of foreign wars more generally. I don't think they necessarily care if Ivanka has to go on the stand or not. How much do you think Biden's age will impact this election? Again, if Biden were, my thinking was always that if Biden were running against someone like Ron DeSantis, it would be really a problem for him, right? Because Ron DeSantis is 45 years old. And, you know, he may or may not wear lifts, but he is 45, right? He's a younger guy. Whereas, again, this is not a criticism of wearing lifts. I mean, good for him. But uh, I so but he's running against someone who's 78 or 77 who. So I think Trump making this case against Biden for being old when also being old is not going to he's not going to be able to sell it. Does the Democratic Party have a better viable alternative to Biden? So this is like the $24 billion question is like, could you pull? I mean, Biden did really well. And Biden has been always underestimated. Do I like love Biden? Do I? I mean, I don't know that voters are obsessed with him the way they might have been with an Obama or even a Bill Clinton, right? Or JFK. I mean, junior, uh, JFK senior, sorry. Uh, There are politicians that are these kind of figures, these important sort of spiritual figures in American life. Joe Biden is not one of those politicians, but he was able to put together a lot of voters and he read in a way that was a sort of traditional politician. I I mean, if you had, if Biden had said that he wasn't going to run and you ran a full, um, you could do it. But I I just think that it doesn't, I think it's going to make, it's going to have a very divided Democratic Party And ultimately, you have an incumbent. And why sacrifice incumbency? How much will Robert Kennedy Jr. affect the race? So he's an interesting candidate because I think a lot of the people who supported him hoped that he would hurt Biden. But a lot of his policies are very Republican policies, right? Like the anti-vax stuff has turned from a liberal thing to a conservative thing. He's anti, I mean... The, this, you know, he wants to steal the border, right? That's not a very democratic policy. I, he's got a lot of stuff that seems really, really Republican. And in fact, there's polling and again, polling, we're going to take it with a grain of salt, but there's some polling that shows that he actually pulls from Trump. And it would make sense because he has a lot of Trump's policies. Why does Cornell West believe he's going to win the presidency? <laughs> Cornel West is like a very smart guy and an important activist. This really bums me out. Look, do I wish that there were a really smart black activist in this uh, presidential race or any presidential race? Yes. But do I think he's the person for it? Probably not. And and it's really a bummer because he's really done so much good work and is very, very smart and interesting and important and a really important voice. But this is probably not his moment. The Republican, de- the re- the next Republican debate is in Miami here tomorrow, I believe. Yeah. You're expecting what? I'm expecting what we've seen in the last two, which is a, a whole lot of nothing, right? Got five candidates on the stage, none of whom are polling at more than, ten, you know, None of them are polling at double digits. Uh, the front runner is doing counter programming somewhere else. 
you know, you ha- it's all undercard, right? If you have no one who is possibly going to get the nomination, then that makes me think it's all undercard. You're mortified that we can't do better than this, correct? Let's just lay it out there. Let's just let's step back from everything that's happening here. <laughs> you uh, try, aspiring to be an object uh, virtue uh, fairness person, you're mortified. Right. We've arrived at a level of such extremes and stupidity that what you're watching is actively stupid, is it not? I mean, yes, but you know, they nominated a reality television host. And we and I, I want to say, like, yes, it's stupid, but we have a long history of doing stupid stuff in this country. So I would like you know, this is a new we have done many stupid things in this country. We will likely continue to do stupid stuff. All I want is democracy to continue. You know, it doesn't have to be anyone's first choice, but the stakes are quite high in this election. It's not like a 1990s election where one guy, you know, wears a brown tie and the other guy wears a red tie and we're talking about the merits of that i mean this is uh this is the big one and so yes it's 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 such a low it's such a low bar it's (laughs) just just please by 2024 allow freedom to not be gone yes i mean (laughs) i don't want to move out of the country. Okay. So very please. Good. That's where we yeah. are. Excellent. That's where we are. <laughs> fast politics. You want to know how fast? This fast. <laughs> we just <laughs> want to stay free. It's That's right. such a bare minimum ask. <laughs> and I'm not sure we're going to achieve it. And neither nope. neither's Molly. <laughs> yep. You don't know, Molly. You don't know. <laughs> if I make you guess right now and be right, you don't know. I mean, I, I certainly hope that democracy keeps going because I, I don't love the, you know, Trump is getting ready for a retribution tour and the stuff he's got planned seems, I, I don't want to go to Gitmo, you know. All right. Very good. Thank right. you. Uh, thank you, Molly. Thank you. Uh, I don't want to go to Gitmo. All right. I just, I'm uh, hoping democracy doesn't fall. All right. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned that. Just mortifying. When he's not plotting during the break, Stugatz <laughs> is doing his own show during the break. Yeah. And so he just asked Stugatz, Stugatz just asked Greg Cody, you can only have one, Greg Cody, <laughs> democracy or football? That's a good question. And Greg Cody stared at him and there was a long, long pause. <laughs> and Greg Cody said, democracy, but I'd really miss football. <laughs> and then Greg Cody said... But I'd give up college football. Yeah. Right. I agreed. I don't want to get greedy. <laughs> give me democracy and the NFL and I'm good. Yes. Or That's the concession I'll make, yeah. okay, what is college up. football. Yeah. I mean, there's five games a year we care about. Major League honest. Baseball? Gone? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> We're not flipping about this as a country, are we? Like, in the understanding that freedom, the, the protection of it requires eternal vigilance. It can't be something we're complacent about. We can't just I, – I, how did the room feel about just the ending of that conversation? Uh, I'm confident in my ability to get back to the emotional state I need to be come next November. And I've really enjoyed my break from yeah. the Trump regime over these last few years. And people are always like, well, the economy and inflation, you happy there are no mean tweets? Well, actually, yeah. Yeah, I'm happy that there are no mean tweets. And uh, I'm actually not really paying all that much attention right now because I know come next November, I'm going to I'm going to rile myself up to unhealthy mental places and and I'll fear the fall of democracy and all these things and knowing that I'll get there. Knowing that it'll, it'll be like a bike. You're pacing yourself. It's I, like yeah, it's load management. To, it's load management. I don't need despair. to entertain whether or not I need to give up maction for freedom. I don't. Like it's. I understand the gravity of the situation. Right. I'm locked and loaded. I'm ready okay. to vote. Like I, if I could vote now, I would. What day is it? You oh, can today's vote. actually election day. Election day. We're back to this one's not that important. Today is election day. Today is election day. This one is also important. Actually, just go out there, get on and vote because fall democracy and all that. Meanwhile, on the other side of the room, is fear and depression. But it can be load management. 
It yes. can, it, 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 as you age, and there's a certain number of anxieties and mental strains in your daily life, you're allowed to. I, I believe I asked Mike Ryan. Oh, I asked Mike Ryan the other day if he had seen the last week tonight on uh, that John Oliver did on the McKenzie Group that Adam McKay keeps referencing, like a truly, truly evil outfit. And Mike Ryan's response was, world bad place going to watch cartoons. Hmm. Yeah, Warner Brothers Animation. Nice. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Injustice. Mm -hmm. Been on that Max app just watching all these DC cartoons. Something nice and light. I've been watching a lot of Leslie Nielsen lately, and it's oh. been doing wonders for me. Just something nice and light as the world burns, right. quite literally and figuratively. As What are you going to do about it? I mean, I'll vote next November. I'm with you, though. Watch or cartoons until or, then. Or, yeah. or, or today. Yeah. Or you can vote today. Yeah, right. not absentee. Today's not good. <laughs> Today's not good for your Today schedule. doesn't work for me. Today's no. important, Because it does, it's democracy on is the line Is it, Stu? What's today? important about today? I'm not voting, but I'm yeah, told it's tell, important. Tell me no, why today is so I'm not Bam doing voting day. Bam out of bio said you should vote. Yeah. Uh, 20, 20, and 10 got me considering it. Uh, you should. Is today the day we vote for the bats, or? <laughs> you should vote. Uh, go, go out. Early and, and often. Vote today. Yeah, and not early and often. And be careful with locked and loaded as uh, as verbs on uh, on of all kinds. You know, it's a misnomer that they're coming to take guns. That's it's just they're not coming to take guns. They're coming to prevent guns. I don't want to have this conversation, but I would say, Stu God's But it's an effective slogan, and we just like let it go unchecked. Kind of like how down here, there's like ah, oh, Biden he's a socialist, and Biden's just like well, but okay, your opinion. <laughs> Let's get <laughs> disagree. I would take a respectfully disagree. See, you're trying to get me there. It's not going to happen. I'm going to watch my cartoons. It seems like he's trying to get off of there. Yeah, he is. I you was trying. Stay there, I right? was. Yeah. I was trying to. And, uh, and then you mentioned guns, and I. I you did. went locked and loaded, and I. I, I took you exception went, to that. You went locked. And you know loaded. what I like to see? I like to see Leslie Nielsen settle up to the bar, say, "Give me the strongest thing you got," and the waiter pulls up with like a really oiled up beefcake. Yeah, speaking of guns, I want to see the naked gun with Leslie Nielsen. Now you're talking. What was the story you sent me the other day that Leslie Nielsen, uh, he was a prodigious whoopee cushion user, and it is something <laughs> I, I believe we can all use. I believe that that would soften simmering tensions in America. If I just gave a good whoopee if cushion. I give everybody just a whoopee cushion sound, I believe it's the original humor. I believe before there was speech, there was a cave person climbing up a, a tree and farted, and the other cave person laughed. <laughs> I believe that's the original comedy. You yeah. don't think they were confused? It had its day, though. It's not <laughs> anymore. I mean, the, after an initial burst of confusion, right. where's that smell from? They can't talk. I do believe that laughter was the universal bridge that was crossed in whatever the original fart sound was, and no one used it to greater effect, I do not believe, than Leslie Nielsen, who traveled with a whoopee the cushion. The story, as I recalled it, was like Leslie Nielsen played the long game with Priscilla Presley. Well before she co-starred in the Naked Gun movies, Leslie Nielsen was on set. Well, she was uh, on set of a, an Elvis movie, and there was like a love scene, and it was making everybody uncomfortable, and Leslie Nielsen sees the moment to walk up to Priscilla Presley, hand her a business card, and say, if you ever want to talk about it, let me know. And he let out a huge fart in that moment <laughs> let out a huge fart and as he walked away that's when priscilla presley read the business card that said leslie nielsen because she didn't know who he was beforehand <laughs> <laughs> let's get to the stat of the day here i've got one as well uh and i want to get to this video from the bucks game that i've been trying to get to for two days uh that a halftime shot that wins ten thousand dollars but first uh let's go uh let's go to the original Thing that I wanted, please, Mike Ryan, the stat of the day. Star of the day, star of the day, it is the star of the day. Star of the day, star of the day, it is the star of the day. Star of the day, star of the day, it is the star of the day. Star of the day, star of the day, it is the star of the day. Today's Set of the day, brought to you by Venmo. Your money, your move. Down to Josh Darrow. Are you going first, or you want me to go first? Well, oh, I sent it down stats, to right? Josh Darrow. I'll right. go first. Wait, he's Josh Darrow? Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll deliver his uh, complicated legacy, Joe Zagaki. Oh. Um, <clears throat> Does Dan have to deliver his as Josh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. I don't know if you've been watching the ice hockey, but uh, there's a pretty bad team. Oh. The San Jose Sharks <laughs> might be the worst team ever assembled. And through 12 games, they have scored 12 goals. Austin Matthews has 13 goals through the exact same amount of games. Roy is shaking his head sadly. Uh, lack of offense bothers you, Roy? Bad Hopefully hockey bothers you? Hopefully they play the Panthers on a Friday, so we'll get a report. <laughs> down, down to Josh Darrow. <laughs> Terrible team, man. Terrible. When mm. is after the game? At the Friday's game is when the next post game goes. <laughs> I'm being told Josh Darrow has a set of the day. That one's brought to you by Bill Seidel's Nissan. <laughs> Bill Seidel's, Seidel's going to save you. <laughs> Seidel saves. Tony has a new nomination for best jingle he's ever heard from local car commercials, local uh, commercials in general. We'll get to that in a second. But Julius Randle, in his first six games, this has to be one of the most hated New York Knicks ever. This doesn't sound like Josh Darrow. <laughs> I don't know how to. I don't know how to do a fake Josh Darrow. So I'm just going to give you the stat. Uh, Julius Randle is in his first six games is shooting 27.1 percent from the field yeah uh, that is the worst of anybody through six games since 1959 so julius randall who was blamed for the end of last season for basically just getting in brunson's way for taking a lot of ill-advised shots he has not merely started this season a great deal worse than just julius randall but a great deal worse than anyone who has dribbled and shot a basketball <laughs> in professional basketball since 1959. and it's brought to you by bill seidel's nissan Bill Seidel's going to save you. Seidel saves. Great job, Josh. I think before the show, uh, when you said that to me, something about Julius Randle, I blurted out, off to a good start. <laughs> well, no, you said before I gave you the stat, this is something you did. I actually meant to make fun of you about that. I just said Julius Randle, and you said good start so far this season. No, not knowing anything, just faking it. And, and They won the last I, game. I, I actually I mean. meant to do it that way, and I, I totally forgot that you said before the show, he's off to a strong start this season, and you meant it. But, Tony, last week you told us, share it with Greg Cody. I don't think Greg Cody knows this. He nominated for best jingle ever the Marooney Ghostbusters ad. Oh yeah. You would, Who are you gonna call? You would agree with that, Greg? Marooney. You would agree yes. with that, Greg? Greg. Very memorable, succinct, uh, catchy, perfect. Do you have any nominations? Thinking back, local commercials over the years. Uh. He's petering out. Not offhand. He, no, no, I mean, he, but he's it's just, probably got to be an old timey one. He's just yeah. like, he, like he, Folgers or something. He's running out of stamina. You, gotta, you can't ask open ended questions. You got to know your team. Valley at this of point the Garden. The no, I do remember. Garden of the Jolly Green Giant. I do remember the commercial for some sort of a, a pasta sauce, a red sauce or something, where the guy goes, That's a spicy meatball. <laughs> I remember that line. That's a spicy meatball commercial. That won't be, an all, that won't be allowed in four years. <laughs> the wait for that to age poorly. Uh, Dan, I have a new one, though. I know I said last time Marooney was the best of all time, but I think I have found one to supersede Marooney, and it's this one right here. All right, three, Dan. You have to take Lucy to Santa's Enchanted Forest. It is so very not enchanted. It's not on Palmetto and Bird Road anymore, which is a very important really? distinction. Yeah. Wow. That There's was, again, one of the biggest hooks of the song is on Palmetto and Burr Road. Doesn't happen anymore. Now it's something different, Billy. There's a there's a big controversy going on right now. So Santa's Enchanted Forest had to move a couple years ago. Whoa. I think that it was a combination of the lease running out and they turned the spot into COVID testing. During the pandemic. For yeah. years. So now it's in Hialeah somewhere, I believe, Miami Gardens, whatever. And this year they're opening where used to be Santa's Enchanted Forest, something called Christmas Wonderland. Bullshit. And what's going on now to the the un you know knowledgeable person you think oh Santa's thought that they were you know too big for 
next to Tropical Park and they air over in their new spot and I'm going to go to Christmas Wonderland and support them. Apparently, there were some nefarious actions going on, and now a lawsuit has been filed by Santa's Enchanted That's Forest right. to shut down Christmas Wonderland. Wow. wow. Warring Wonderlands. <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> you realize we were done? <laughs> I didn't have time to get to the fact that that's yeah. a spicy meatball is an Alka-Seltzer. Alka Alka this is <laughs> new and <laughs> <It> wasn't <laughs> with the it wasn't about a meatball. Right? By oh, by it was the antidote to a spicy meatball. Yeah. Right. Yeah. A tweeter, Stugatz, has written in complaining, as many have, about the Adam McKay climate fact of the day, horrifying climate fact of the day. Mm -hmm. And the complaint has a bunch of insults in it, including, uh, is someone shaking him while he talks? Uh, which I just <laughs> simply responded to. He has an essential tremor. He has a tremor. And the response is just, well, f <laughs> <laughs> proper response. I think that is correct. <laughs> that is the proper response. We have uh, some video that I want uh, to get to here because I've been wanting to get to it for a couple of days, and we have to go to the bucket of death. An assortment of us have to go to the bucket of death. But Stugatz, how do you think you would react if you made a shot at half court? During a game, I think these should be worth more than $10,000. I think the degree of difficulty on this, if you actually make it, this should be insured in a way that wins more money than this. Because it's really hard to make a shot from half court when you've got one try and everybody's watching. It's why they put it there. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, but right. I'm just saying, you don't think that should be worth more than that? It's halftime entertainment, and anytime something like this happens, it pays for itself in terms of what it is that you want, which is people to associate with your brand, a happiness, and a joy joy that people come to sports to experience i'd like it to be worth more but i don't dictate that like you know it's a free crack at ten thousand yeah. dollars you know it's, it's worth the right amount <laughs> a lot of times it's just the in it doesn't go they don't all go viral so it's like you need it to go viral for you to really right. get your money's worth. Mm -hmm. But I think most of the times when these get made, it's some anything anybody can connect with the idea of you're an everyman. You get one chance. You you whatever it is you've been thinking about in your childhood, you get one chance, and then you actually make it win ten thousand dollars. And if I gave you the choice of the ten thousand dollars or the feeling that you'll have for the rest of your life, if you had to choose between the two, my guess is that very little in life has ever given you that much instantaneous joy winning ten thousand dollars making a shot from half court so here in milwaukee you see this video and it's wonderful the reaction first is what night of the in-season tournament we've already had fireworks how about this gentleman from half court <laughs> for where's he going dollars uh, he ran right through the tunnel, made so the shot, great. ran off the court, didn't even want to stay on the court to bask in all the noise and the enthusiasm. Uh, makes it off of the backboard. Bank was open. Bank was open. I hope he called glass. <laughs> There's probably a mountain there of should, paperwork he has to He should get more he if he did call glass. There should, there should be a bylaw that says <laughs> you get like three if you hit glass. Dan, from what you were saying before, we're hearing back here that you want to have like a show, half court shooting competition, ten grand, forever wow. makes it. Oh, I'm down. Oh, man. Mm. You kidding me? That's he wants nice. it to be more though. I am. Maybe in. three attempts <laughs> each. Guy's foot was on the line. Disqualified. Can I just stop for a second? I want to freeze on what was chasing him through the tunnel. There was a referee with antlers. Is that a no or? It, same answer to you wanting uh, Captain Lee on Jimmy Johnson's How's boat. that going? All right, two attempts each. <laughs> Can we see the video of what was chasing him into the tunnel? Because that is a referee dressed as a buck in the background. I just I want... think it's a buck dressed as a referee. <laughs> mm, <fine>. Backwards there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are you sure? I'm yeah. Not, I'm not totally yeah. sure. <laughs> No, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure that's not Joey Crawford dressed as a buck. <laughs> well, I think that we <laughs> need to... Look, I think it's that, a normal that, buck no, that's uniform. A, that is, no, that's a buck dressed as a referee. It's terrifying. Oh, wow. dressed as a buck. No, I think, sure. Tex, I think that's totally a Milwaukee sure. Bucks mascot <laughs> putting is. on a referee striped shirt. Bingo. It was a, it was a real Bucky. deer on yeah. his hind legs. You mm. can't prove it. A real deer on his hind legs. That's remarkable. 
get the bucket of death music. Who's got to go to the bucket of death? A couple people won't be here later in the week when we do this properly. So uh, Billy, Greg Cody, and Sugats will be going to the bucket of death, which is brought to you by KFC's new hot and spicy wings. Order an eight-piece of new hot and spicy wings for four ninety-nine. A participating KFC today. It's finger licking good. Somehow we have like three or four different people who have the golden helmet of life, which makes no sense Thank you. whatsoever. It's not. You do not have it, Tony. I, I got it last week. You did not. Lucy got it last there was week. Yep. Cheater. Got it. Yeah. Cheater. Okay. Cheater. Very Cheater. Good. Yeah, it's in the absolutely. bucket. Uh, bucket. Billy is going to the bucket now. Is that the commander? It is the commander. At, at the Seahawks. Seahawks. Ooh, I'm going to put that game. back. Six yep. and a half point underdog. Yeah. Sam Howell look good. Bad games, man. Tony, you are the lover of all quarterbacks. Thank all you. Average quarterbacks. No, Sam Howell does look good. Dude. Thank he you. Does. He does. He's he does. Good. Yeah. Try to tell you early in the season. He's a gamer. I got the Jags who are hosting the 49ers. Not much better. Ooh, That's one of two good games next week. Mm-hmm. Jags are a three-point dog at home. All lines courtesy of DraftKings Sportsbook. Mm. Tony is someone who every single week falls in love with a quarterback who has gone 24, 28 for 184 yards. Oh, yeah, but yeah, but Howell's not doing that. He throws it down the field. He does. <laughs> throws it to Logan Thomas plenty. Throws <laughs> to anybody. <laughs> Finding everybody. He gets sacked more he than anyone. He gets sacked a ton and he that's, turns that's it over. That's not his fault. Right. I mean, it is kind of his fault. He holds on to the ball a, a little good long of time. sometimes, yeah. Rummaging. He's a gamer. Yeah, he is. He's a good quarterback. The Packers, Jordan Love, he's not good. I'm putting it back. I think we're a three-point dog at oh. Kenny Pickett Steelers. Oh, no. No, no, no. Steelers. Are they still Kenny Pickett Steelers? Wasn't he benched? No. Nope. Oh. <laughs> That's the football expert for the Miami Herald. Yeah, Greg Cody consults an imaginary bird for his picks every Thank week. You. And not doing very well Sin with that Hall bird, Sin ten turnovers this yeah. season. And they don't know what oh, they're talking I mean, about. They come just, on. He gets just, pressure more than any quarterback just, in the NFL. He just runs around, and they what don't do know the what Saints? they're talking about. I got the Saints, about. yeah. Oh. yeah. Saints at Vikings. Oh, Josh Dobbs. Oh, no. <laughs> You're a two-and-a-half-point favorite on the road. Can I get a good team, please? There aren't any. I know. Dad, Stugatz already, Stugatz already has the rummage thing. That's his. You Who's on a bye week? There's four teams on a oh, bye. the Colts. The Dolphins, Chiefs, Rams, and Eagles are on the bye. Colts are at the Keep Patriots, the Colts. but yeah. the Patriots are at Frankfurt. So this game is in Germany. It's a Sunday morning game. That's good. And your Colts two are a two-point favorite. All bets are off. The, yeah. Really? Yeah, yep. all bets wow. are off. That's a keeper. Patriots stink. I agree. Denver, for the love of God. At Bills, Monday Night Football. Oh, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> are the Bills good? That's I mean. what this thing's supposed to do. <laughs> the Bills are no good. Idea. What do you mean? You know that the I Bills are good. You might good. not trust them. They lost to the Jets. That's uh, good guys. That was a good bucket. So did the no, Eagles. No. Bad no choice no I made. No one's very happy. This makes the audience happy. Well, yeah. the golden yeah. helmet of life is getting distributed too much. I believe a lot of people are cheating around here. I believe that uh, Billy does not rule with an iron I fist. I most definitely uh, No do. matter how I much he claims cheating. it. You have like three or four people with the golden helmet of life. Well, that that's always make been the sense. case. There's just 50 people picking now. Before, we had like four. Can we come up with the definitive list of which teams are good? Because no. you just said the Bills are good. If the Bills are good, I get to say the Dolphins are good. Well, the, the Bills, Dolphins are the good. And people and have been oh, – now they're, everyone says they Chris, can't beat a good team. Chris, no. The, the way that people are doing this, and it tends to be pretty stupid, but the way that people are doing this is that you know that two-thirds of the teams in the league do not have a legitimate chance to win the Super Bowl. Not by fluke, not by happenstance, not by anything else. So you have ten teams to choose from if you want to include teams like the Bills and the Chargers in there. If you, if you want to, and I think that while you might not trust the Bills, you've certainly seen enough the last few seasons to know that if Josh Allen doesn't turn the ball over, even if they're in a depreciated state, they're one of the best teams in football. You know this. You have a sample size that extends beyond this year, so they might regress this year. They might not be as good as they are the last couple of years. The Bengals might not be as good as they've been the last couple of years. The Chiefs might not be as good offensively as they've been the last couple of years, but you know that there are eight to ten teams that can win the Super Bowl, and if they are healthy, San Francisco is one of them. If they are healthy, Philadelphia is one of them. The teams that are 6-2, and two, the teams that are 6-3. and three, The Lions. 
Those are the teams you look at, and then you don't trust teams like Seattle. You don't believe in teams like Seattle who can't convert third downs and can't go on the road and do anything. You don't even totally trust Baltimore because you've seen what Lamar Jackson has been in the playoffs, and you might not totally trust that, even though their uh, their their play is very physical at the line of scrimmage. They look a little bit like Philadelphia in terms of being a team that manhandles other teams, even Seattle and Detroit, physically up front. But what are you doing with Josh Allen? Because he's never done it like he had the game against Kansas City. They lost that game. He's never advanced far in the playoffs. Do you or do you not remember that the last couple of years the Bills are playing important games in a way that they're favored to win them. And yeah, and losing the, the them. Bengals have derailed them. He's made it far in the playoffs. He made it to a conference championship game. Or did you forget one of the greatest games? So is Lamar, seen? though. I'm saying as it relates to Lamar Jackson, he's made it to a conference championship, hasn't he? Right. No. Lamar no? Lamar Jackson has not been when? someone who has carried teams during the postseason. Hoping. No, you were just guessing. And Josh Allen was, what, 13 seconds away. 13 seconds from Mahomes to Kelsey away. Too regardless. much time. We 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 agree, man. Come on, we're not in agreement that the Bills, the last few years, are a legitimate contender. We're not in agreement on that. Yeah, but their window's closing. I think. I think the Bills were better. They're last They're a year. game behind the Dolphins, and they won by four touchdowns when they right. played them. No, I get all that. But that window, it's closing. They have been getting more and more hurt yeah. since then. They got a lot of injuries. I like Baltimore better than I like Jacksonville. Best abilities don't, availability. Don't underestimate the well uh, said. the Ravens. The crows are going to be there. Watch, watch it. The watch crow, it. crow is a different bird. You can't watch call it. one bird by a different name. That's such yeah. a yeah. lame. That, this no, is I how can. he peters out. Watch it. Like the crows, you can he, call them the birds, he, and that's fine. This is all he's got left at the end of a show. He calls the ravens a different kind of bird, right. and then his bold prediction is watch it. Watch it. I mean, you're you're the one disrespecting uh, Lamar Jackson. Uh, an all-time Lobo. Yep. You know, you don't Tell disrespect him. L-Jack. Believe yep. me, I mean, he's going to be right there. He also referenced a commercial from 1969. So, yeah. Do we have that. that? Do we have that commercial? Let's play that. Uh, he was defending himself, saying it's an Alka-Seltzer commercial. <laughs> Alka-Seltzer can help unstuff you, relieve the acid indigestion, and help make you your old self again. Mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball. I don't know. Cut. <laughs> that guy is not Italian. Great commercial. That is a fake accent that somehow <laughs> disemboweled an oven.